and they come back down to their people, their community with a prophetic message. Um, and so I invite everyone as we start this year to kind of lean in and think about what is the prophetic message that's being, that's, that's being told to us. How are we listening to God in this adventure? Uh, how are we, how are we allowing ourselves to be transformed? Are we allowing ourselves to be transformed? Because it is such a challenging and difficult time and there is so much heaviness. So in thinking about what we could do for our students and thinking about the positive aspect of uh, a new school year that's gonna look like no other in, in, in our lifetime probably, um, how can it be an adventure and something that can build curiosity and can be exciting? And how can we get our panther involved? You know, we've, we've already talked about that too. And just, so just how can we build excitement for our students and also recognize our, our, as parents and um, teachers and administrators, how can we help uh, foster that transformation? So while we're talking about adventure weights, we're also talking about hope and healing and Wellness. I mean, that is the core of what we have to focus on this year. That's what I've heard when I've talked to parents. Um, that's what I've heard is the, the biggest need. And so we're going to think about our student needs, our parent needs, and our community needs. And we're going to think about how do we hold our students in this very trying time. And maybe um, many of our students are lucky or blessed that we have internet and they have um, they have books and they have teachers who are connecting with them 10 times a day in small groups, but that doesn't mean our students aren't suffering as well and aren't uh, needing some real um, handholding and, and, and support. So we want to be really attuned to our student needs as well as our parent needs. I met with our family guild last week, our family guild chairs, um, and I our school has been carried <laughs> by our family guild for so many years. Um, and so what we were thinking about is like, well, how can we now carry the, the families? Because you all, the parents are carrying a huge load right now. Something that's, that's, that, that shouldn't be, right? That the teacher should be, um, uh, should have our students at our school. That, that's how it would be in quote unquote normal times, but it's different right now. So you are carrying parents such a heavy load and I want to thank you for that because we could not do it without you. We could not do this without you. And then we also want to think about our greater community needs. So we really are going to focus on this hope and healing and wellness this year and, and we look forward to um, hearing from you. We want to hear your voice and we can't wait to hear you. I sent out a survey today um, and we want to hear your responses. Um, thanks for your candid responses. It was really helpful in the spring for distance learning. And we also um, have, we're going to continue with our daily prayer, our Friday assemblies, and our sing-alongs. And we look forward to at the end of September thinking about how do we hold what needs of our students is like, how do we keep things kind of going normal? How, where do we get student leadership? So you'll be seeing student government elections. They are coming up. Few, in a few weeks, we're going to have our honor society doing some tutoring. We're going to start an art club this year. Um, and we're going to continue our journalism club because we only got to publish one school newspaper last year. And for those who are returning, it was absolutely adorable. So those are just a few of the things. And now I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Vivo. And he's going to talk about um, a little bit about his second step classes and a little bit about the parent support groups. And some of those start this Friday. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to him. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, Dr. Fuller has asked me to uh, just to really support are the students' just social, emotional well-being and continue their learning process uh, in, in that realm and really focused on uh, just helping them to continue uh, develop their self-awareness, their ability to, to self-manage um, themselves in, in different situations in, in their new school environment, uh, to practice be, being good problem solvers and making uh, decisions. There's just social awareness of their, their new environments around them and, and other things, especially the older students going on, on in the world, um, and just continuing to develop those relationship skills. And that's one, one thing 
primarily how we do that is through um, our second step classes, uh, more our classroom learning um, that we'll do weekly during the first trimester and bi-weekly after that, um, where we talk about all topics like that uh, weekly in lessons. And the teachers too then have different activities and, and kind of um, topic points that they will touch on during the week too to continue that. Um, and hopefully too, you'll start to see um, some of the, their homework assignments and having conversations, uh, your students having conversations with you at home and, and practicing some of those skills, um, not just in class, but at home too. Uh, the other way we really wanna uh, support our students is by connecting and supporting our parents and our families and um, just having more frequent uh, parent groups to talk about just different, um, just how parents and families are managing uh, different learning situations and, and family situations that are coming up and allowing parents too to, to share uh, some of their successes and how they're meeting these obstacles and meeting these challenges. And so we're gonna do that in different uh, grade level groups starting this Friday with TK and K um, in first and second. And then in the following Friday with third and fourth and fifth and up, um, just giving a chance for parents to connect um, just to kind of share what's going on and, and uh, to also problem solve some different ideas in different ways that we might be able to together uh, just help support support the students. Um, so that's Thanks. coming up in the next couple of Fridays. Great, thank you. And so again, we want to hear your thoughts on how distance learning is going and how the school can support your efforts at home. Uh, we definitely want to develop programming around these two areas. That's where we're at right now. So we do look forward to hearing from you. Um, and if you can, try to do it by um, in a week, within a week. Um, and also you can put any questions or comments in the chat now about these two topics. The other thing um, that we began talking about as a staff um, in in, um, in, 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 in May and June, we started talking about our journey to becoming anti-racist community. Even saying that, it's not just like, it's something you become and you're done. Um, it's, it's a lifelong journey, obviously. And, and I know in our community, um, we're very multicultural, multilingual community. It can almost be taken for granted. We're all, you know, we all accept and welcome one another. That's not the same as being anti-racist. And so I think it's, it's something that we are, really uh, starting and really trying to begin this, this deeper conversation. And I welcome any parents if they want to uh, start some sort of think tank around this about how we can engage our community. Um, I've started by write, reading these two books that I put here, uh, We Want to Do More Than Survive. That was uh, recommended to me by a fellow parent um, and how to be an anti-racist. Um, some of our teachers have uh, gotten some new literature that they're reading to their class. One of the books that we just arrived today was called Hair Love. Um, and there's some upcoming professional development our teachers are participating in called Creating Equitable Curriculum for Catholic Educators or Educating for Racial Justice Through Art. So we'll be, we'll be talking about this more and we welcome any support or ideas from our community about how we might engage this in a broader conversation. So I know many of you, the reason you wanted to come up tonight and one of the things, um, you know, as you've been noting since March, you know, every few weeks we say there's an update or every month. Um, I wanted to just give you the latest updates from LA County Public Health that we've been following. Again, they change so rapidly. There could have been something this morning <laughs> that uh, that is, you know, will come out tomorrow. So. Um, but one thing is there's a new monitoring system and on August 28th, the um, governor announced a new monitoring system to gauge public health across 58 counties um, using a colored four tiered system. And the, this is where we are. We're still in this kind of purple widespread um, period or time or uh, that's how we're classified right now. Um, and so a return to school, um, this is what we received in an email from 
uh, Mr. Paul Scala on September 10th was that as for all K through 12 schools, early November or after the election is when we might expect a return to in-person instruction according to the department leadership. So right now, we're kind of on a month to month approach. <laughs> so as we update, because when we do return to school, we'll likely be in some sort of uh, hybrid. We won't want to just come all back all at one time, um, that we will be doing kind of a hybrid um, phased in approach. And as we get closer to that, we look forward to sharing uh, what exactly that'll look like, what that'll mean on your day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that's kind of where we are right now. I just wanted everyone to let everyone know we're not looking, right now we're looking, finishing up September and definitely through October in our distance learning program. Now, some of you might've heard about something called a waiver. Uh, which um, is an application where individual schools could apply to open perhaps before an entire district or uh, county opens. Um, the leadership of the LA County Public Health Department continues to state that waivers for elementary schools and they're only for TK through six are not being accepted at this time. So right now we are not considering a waiver because they're not even uh, available or being accepted. Um, if that changes, uh, then we will certainly uh, reach out to see if that's something our community um, would be interested in. What is being allowed right now is specialized support. Um, counties are allowing schools to provide uh, in-person instruction to cohorts of small students and up to two adults, um, no more than 10% of the student body. And that's for prioritizing students with special learning needs, uh, English learners, students, newcomers, students who can't access distance learning. Um, so that is something that just started this week um, in some schools. That is not something that All Souls um, is offering right now, but it's something we have begun talking about. Um, so you may hear a little bit more about that or we may reach out to your student if that's something we decide uh, to offer in some small capacity. The other thing is daycare for supervision of distance learning. Um, that is being offered in some schools and in some Catholic schools for TK through six. And that is only allowed if it's non-teaching personnel. So like aftercare, um, again, right now, that is not something we are able to offer because our staff is 100% of every day, 100% engaged in our distance learning program. So um, again, that is something that if it seems to be a need of our community, um, then we will look into that perhaps at the beginning of October as we learn more about um, the timeline for reopening schools. So those are two uh, small ways that schools are reopening on a very targeted and um, small, small way. And that's something that we will be open to if and when um, we see the need for it in our community. Um, but again, that wouldn't be before October. So. so that's a lot of information I just threw at you between the theme for the year, going from wellness to, um, to our journey to become an anti-racist community and accompany each other in that, to some information about our school um, and the updates from the health, um, from LA County Health. So I'm um, just gonna take a pause right there. I don't know if you have any questions or if there's anything that struck you um, so far in any of those from the theme. I just wanna give a moment to allow people to um, enter any questions into. My next section is going to be on what the school has done so far to prepare. So hold tight if those are some of your questions. But if you have any questions, thus far um, or comments, please feel free to share those. We may not be able to react to everything just now, but um, I just want to check in. Let's give a moment. So just want to check in with our panelists to see if there's anything right now that we may need on anything I've covered so far. We we'll also have time for questions. Um, at the end. And I see right now that there's a few people who said that they would love to help on um, integrating equity and racial 
bias in our community, that, that would be really, I, I love that there's some people that have already stepped up and said that they'd like to help with that because we may want to uh, have some sort of committee or way of uh, thinking about that. Okay, so I will continue. Feel free to keep putting in your questions. So I recognize that the, you know, the, the, the fact that we may not, that we're looking at a November at the very earliest to even start phasing in uh, may be a cause for dismay for some of you. Um, so we hear you and that again is why we are um, focusing on wellness and our distance learning program and trying to make that the best academic experience it can be. Um, and we also are focusing on reopening. So all we have ordered and um, received face shields for all of our TK through second students. They're very cute and I think they'll enjoy wearing them. Uh, we've received our PPE for all of our teachers, which includes masks, face shields, hospital grade surface wipes for their classrooms and infrared thermometers for each classroom. We received our electrostatic sprayer for our cleaning, cleaning crew, which you know, sprays down um, uh, all surfaces that would, would maybe be hard to get from wiping them down. We have gone through the school and separated all of our desks at six feet apart, uh, making sure there's good walkways. Um, so that's, we still have to tape down some of the directionality, but um, we have taken out about um, probably a third of all of our desks. They're now being stored in the school hall for the time being. Um, because we will likely, when we return, stretch out into the school hall. We have ordered all of our COVID signage in three languages, and we're waiting for that to um, arrive. We have added additional plants. And for some of you might say, what, what does that have to do with, um, you know, COVID? And, you know, I think it's about a healthy environment, a, a warm environment, and I'm excited about our gardening committee continuing to green our community. The other thing is our bottle, whoops, I'm sorry about that. Um, we have ordered our bottle filling stations and our hand washing stations. Those are ordered. We're waiting for those to be installed because that does um, involve a lot of um, a lot of plumbing work. So the plumbers were there today and we look forward to that. We've been wanting hand washing stations even before COVID outside. So we'll have six um, stations, which I think will be great. Uh, we are currently vetting pickup and COVID symptom tracing apps. Um, if you are aware of one, if you're techie and you know of one, um, please send it to Ms. Vasquez because we've been um, looking at those. And if you're aware of something that we might not be aware of or your, your work uses, um, in terms of COVID, um, and then also in terms of pickup apps, because we do want to pick up app. We won't be allowing parents to come into the classrooms to pick up their children, so we are looking at those. Right now, all the faculty and staff have a health screening form um, if they are working on campus that they fill out, and that's getting us into that practice um, that we will be asking all students and families to fill out on a daily basis. So there, um, our faculty is already and staff are already doing that. We are vetting air purification systems. I think at my July meeting, we talked about um, getting UVC lights and we do, uh, that is still something we're considering, but we're also looking at GPS uh, air um, ionization system. So we're looking at both of those and deciding we have, um, are excited that all of our ACs have been cleaned thoroughly and all of the, um, the, the filters have been replaced with the most upgraded filter that our system handles, which is great. Um, and we've had a great walkthrough with our COVID task force team, which is the school parent healthcare workers and our admin team. We had a great walkthrough looking at different configurations of classrooms and um, that was really helpful. So we look forward to continuing to work with our task force and meeting again in the near future. So we met last time um, in late August before school started. So 
I'm gonna take a few moments. If you have any questions about our current, um, our current uh, um, preparations for COVID. Does anybody have any questions? Please feel to put free. I'm just gonna stop sharing for just a second. If there's any questions in the chat, any new messages? We're happy. Yeah, Dr. Fuller, we're responding to a lot of questions as far as how the rooms have been updated for COVID and desk spacing, et cetera. So we're trying to answer that. Okay, great. So yes, in terms of, um, let's see, yes, we already have ordered, I forgot to tell you that we have ordered the plexiglass um, for the teacher, the, the front office. Um, so that is on its way and we are looking to put plexiglass on all teacher desk and then um, I don't have a picture of it, but these dividers for the student desk, these clear dividers for the student desk. Um, I regret that I forgot to include those. So yes, we are ordering those. Um, we are still comparing different um, student desk um, dividers. So if you have one that you're looking at, we've narrowed it down to about three. Um, and we are gonna be looking for parent volunteers to perhaps help us with the plexiglass for the teacher's desk. So if you're handy and you know how you might want to create something like this, uh, we have looked to hiring someone to uh, make those, but if you are handy and would like to help us create those for the teacher desk, we will be putting the plexiglass on all teacher desks. I'm glad you reminded me, I forgot to say that. Anything else? Um, a couple of books, picking up kids required to wear masks. Absolutely. <laughs> so these might've already been um, answered, but absolutely all mask once you enter campus, it will be required as will for all students to wear. I see some questions about the shared tables in TK and K. Um, Thank you for these questions. Yes, the, the tables have actually already been removed and replaced with tiny desks. So um, the smallest desk we could find, they are individual. Each child will be at an individual desk for TK and K. I'm just looking through a few of these. As we said, some children will be in, uh, will only be having a car line for drop off and pick up so that uh, parents will not be um, entering into the school. Carrie, there's a good question in the Q and A. Sure. Uh, this says rather than in-person supervision, would it be possible to consider additional personnel, possibly part-time, to monitor small group assignments, reading groups, uh, etc. For part-time um, in-person, is that what the question was about? Um, I'm not sure exactly. Um, maybe if. Uh, Joanna, you want to clarify, um, but I think I saw this one come early. So I think he was talking about, yeah, not in person. So additional personnel to help with additional small groups. That is not something right now that's in our budget, but we can, if that is um, a desire, please put that in the survey. And if we see that there's a lot that maybe uh, we do have some college students who have um, looked to do from Occidental College that we're looking to work with. Um, who are looking to do internships and offering some tutoring. So we are looking at different ways to incorporate more small group time um, and more ways of kind of individualized attention. So yes. I see a question here about um, the high flex model that we previously talked about in terms of parents being able to choose to continue um, online only. Yes, that will continue. That will be still an option that is still in the plan as well as that when we do open, it would still be half of the community at one time, half of the school. We would not be able to phase in everybody at the same time. It would be a phased in process. You would be able to still opt into the online program. Um, and we would likely start with TK and K, uh, our youngest students, uh, first when we when we go back. Um, Dr. Fuller, could you address this one question? Um, are you looking into COVID testing for all students and staff? Sorry, say that again. 
Are you looking into COVID testing for all students and staff? Yes, that is a requirement for uh, um, a reopening for LA County Public Health that all staff is uh, tested and there's a rotating every week. There's a certain cohort of teachers that is tested so that over, um, I'd have to look at how, you know, over what period of time everybody is tested and then repeat tested again. So yes, that will be part of our reopening plan. I see also a question about janitorial services and yes, we'll have a daytime janitorial service as well as an evening after hours who will then do the heavy disinfecting. Carrie, that was a good question about if a family did not feel comfortable returning to school. Mm -hmm. Then that would, they could, in the high flex model, they could choose to continue with the distance learning only. That will be an option. Because we don't know um, where people will be at. We will do another survey once it's the opening possibility is more imminent, then we'll do another survey so that everyone uh, can express where they feel comfortable and we can get a gauge of uh, what parents would like. Oh, I see someone said that they can't see the questions. They're only seeing the responses. And I did make that you know what, it looks like people are sending questions to all panelists, but not necessarily all panelists and attendees. Okay. So if you'd like to see the questions, please everyone select all panelists and attendees so that they can view. Thank you, yes. The what? Uh, Sorry, Carlos yeah. is going to read you a question. I apologize. Um, uh, what is the COVID testing requirement for students and families? Will we also need to do daily symptom surveys? And then uh, there was another question earlier. Can uh, does this, is a student required to do COVID testing, or can they opt out? I believe the, the there is daily symptom testing. Yes, and temperature checks. That I'm not testing daily. Um, symptom checking and temperature checks that will be required, but not COVID testing unless there was an exposure and there was, re yeah, there was symptoms or an exposure that would be different. Um, uh, somebody else asked about um, opening in November. Again, that would look like the, the idea that, and, and we're not saying it's opening in November. That's just, it wouldn't have, that would be the earliest. Um, and, that, and we'll get into more detail as we get closer to that. Um, but again, our idea right now would be that it would be the, um, it would be grade level, you know, half of the grade levels on Monday, Wednesday, half of the grade levels on Tuesday, Thursday, everybody at home on Friday. That's, that's the hybrid high flex model that we came up with um, and worked on very hard over the summer. Um, now, will that develop as we get closer? But that, that's where we're at still now. I don't know if anybody has, is there any other? Um, I don't know if it, somebody answered this one. Um, yes, there would be before and after care when we reopen. Um, and all students will have to wear masks, even TK. Uh, somebody asked about the flu shot. Yes, that's why we've been reaching out to you all. We do have um, upcoming audit for our immunization. So Ms. Viscata has been reaching out to those of you who need to get your boosters. Uh, there's been some research lately that, you know, said the importance of childhood immunizations, even for helping against COVID, um, and it is required. <laughs> we do follow state laws. We are not exempt. All students have to be immunized, and we do recommend, um, yeah, the, the flu shot and any other, um, and of course, all, all required immunizations. Um, before we get back to school. I see someone asked the starting time will remain at 8.30 in order to accommodate the expanded car line. Absolutely. We will probably have a 7.30 to 8.30 uh, time frame because um, the car line will be long. 
Sure, there's a good question. If a teacher or student gets COVID, how will it be handled? Yes, again, we will go into, as we get closer, go through the entire, we will publish our, because the um, guidance has continually evolved, uh, we have a kind of working document, but we will publish that and that will talk about uh, if somebody gets COVID, we will follow. Um, I'll send out the link again. We're following exactly the protocol put out by LA County Public Health for school reopenings, and they've been updating that. Uh, so we will follow exactly that guidance in terms of quarantining, in terms of uh, somebody being sent home, COVID testing, um, all of those things. So two, those will be forthcoming. I don't want to talk without having those notes directly in front of me in that guidance document, um, but that we will follow the LA County Health Department's guidelines. You know, this is um, a good question um, that I think we're kind of going to address. Um, would it be possible to build in some playtime for the younger grades um, to help the kids um, have, to have some like organized uh, games that we could play? just so the kids can kind of socialize and get along as far as our health and well-being now. Yes, that's something, um, and I see somebody else has a question, you know, having a five to 10 minute hangout. That is something uh, that we've been encouraging. And I know once uh, teachers get more comfortable, the online environment, and I know um, one of our teachers, Ms. Rivas, and her um, instructional aide, Ms. Ramirez, if you're in her class, they have been doing a lot with, um, you know, eating snacks together and just having hangout time, 10 minutes. So we are looking forward to expanding that, uh, not just at that one class and grade level, but across the school. And Dr. Vivo had some ideas of even perhaps starting that next week, but we'll start on a small scale. But folding in that hangout time and that free time is, is really, really important. So in the interest of time, I'm going to keep, um, I think we'll continue and we'll still have questions at the end, but I think these are uh, really great, um, really good comments and questions, especially around student interaction and that time for them to just have that free hangout time is really important. There's a good suggestion that maybe a parent could monitor some of that student Zoom time for study sessions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for recess in person, it would be cohorted groups. It would be by class level only, which will be different from our virtual recess. But for sure, our class, um, our, our, our class in person, it would have to be only that grade level. It would look very different than years past and more of like an organized PE type session. Um, however, um, yes, as far as, I know many of you are interested in that kind of recess time now, um, and uh, we look forward to having uh, Ms. Rivas and some of the teachers who've tried some of these things out to share with other teachers. So you'll be seeing that more because I'm going to have all the teachers in the next few weeks try it uh, at least one day a week and then expand from there. Okay, so more, more information coming. I know uh, People are anxious to see the guidelines and I will send it out because our guidelines will just be following. Um, so you can see what happens if, you know, a teacher were to get COVID or a student gets COVID, you can see the, the, the protocol and uh, the steps that we'll be taking. So that will be forthcoming. So talking a little bit more about the present situation that we're in, um, I want to thank everyone uh, for your help with the STAR assessments. That is a requirement from the Archdiocese. It is um, an opportunity for us, especially for the little ones, to see um, the teachers, since they are doing those one-on-one, -on -one, to see kind of where they're at uh, at this point, to see it, how it's one measure, one of many, but one measure of how our students are doing, especially after missing um, in-person instruction for, for a trimester. So uh, we are grateful um, to your support. We know we had, um, there were some challenges today because the Renaissance Star website um, crashed because of, I think all the Catholic schools taking these tests, um, but we are doing them in Spanish and English. 
And for those of you who are wondering, well, what about Mandarin? Mandarin was tested because you guys were the pioneers <laughs> of helping us get some of this data um, on uh, some standardized data on their Chinese was done in June, uh, the end of the school year. So we figured if the Mandarin strand could do it, we wanted to go forward and have the English and Spanish through um, star assessments. I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Vasquez to talk a little bit about enrichment and after school programming. Um, so if some of you, like I said, we are going to work in um, not fee based and you know, highly organized. We're going to work in some informal interactions, but she can talk about some of the fun enrichment and after school program that we have uh, offering now. Thank you. So yes, hopefully all of you received that email yesterday. Uh, Fall enrichment is back. Uh, we are doing it on a much uh, smaller scale, however, because it is online. And we know the students are online a lot already. Um, but these are interactive, just as the classes are. These enrichment classes are a great outlet for students to get some of that pent up energy from just sitting behind a desk, to use some of that, to still be creative in an online environment. We still need those outlets, the students still need it, and so we have decided to continue offering enrichment classes. Um, we narrowed down the list, so it's available right now on Popsicle, uh, which is our registration app that uh, we use for enrichment. Please email me if you have questions about that. I know many of you have already registered for some classes, so I'm really excited to see that. Um, we have, uh, we're doing chess, we're doing drums, we are doing a, a lot of the dance classes, just, energy to really help these kids and to really be able to still allow the students to be creative um, even in this environment. Um, there's a possibility that we may also be adding um, a theater improv for the older grades and, and we do have speech and debate also for the older grades. So there is a, a little bit of variety. It's not as large as our usual enrichment program is, but um, I think it's a really good start, especially for our fall season. So please consider that um, if you're able. Uh, for your children to still have that enriching experience that um, All Souls has always been about. Um, I know many of you have asked about the piano lessons. Um, our piano teacher, Ms. Hall, is, is doing well and fine. Uh, she felt that um, it would be very difficult to continue teaching uh, piano since it's so um, tactile, you know, and she really needs to be there to help the students move their fingers. So piano is put on hold uh, for the fall um, and probably until we do return in person. Um, and so it will, we are eagerly awaiting the return, um, but that's kind of to answer your question. There's also the question about choir. I got a lot of people asking that today. Um, we, it's hard for us to have choir online. Uh, the sound just isn't the same. And Mr. Resauce is also very busy with the regular music classes. So um, I know those are very, two of our most popular enrichment classes and those will be on hold for the fall. Um, but there are a lot of other great classes that the students can still be involved in. Um, as far as the musical, yay, we do plan on having Moana. Um, we want to wait until we return. I know we talked about maybe live streaming it or doing it online, uh, which is, it's an option, you know, in this environment. But I know a lot of the parents really felt so much time and work and effort has been placed into that, that um, we really want to just use that and wait until we can return in person to have a fabulous show, um, just like the musical was the previous year. So um, please kind of stay tuned and wait for that. But a lot of these classes are still going on. And I really encourage you, if you're able, please give your children this opportunity to have these enrichment classes as a good outlet. Great, thank you. And I know, um, yeah, we will continue. I know today, um, some choir members were asked to, to meet with Mr. Islas and we will, it was kind of a trial run to see what we can do. So we are actively working. How can we bring our choir back? <laughs> um, and how can we organize uh, some practices, obviously all online. So we are thinking about that. So uh, please hold on to see what we can do uh, in, in with, with choir. Again, in thinking about wellness and excitement and building community, we are working on scheduling um, our Mid-Autumn Moon Festival virtual assembly. That's always a big part of our um, school and that's on October 1st. So we're seeing how we can incorporate that. Um, a big community event at our school is the Feast of St. Francis. Um, 
pet blessing. And Father Patrick told me today that he'd be more than happy to have a drive through pet blessing. So we're very excited to schedule that. So stay tuned for um, when that will be. And we'll, uh, won't be the same as our pet parade, but we look forward to a drive through pet blessing. We have already scheduled our Hispanic Heritage Month kind of culmination um, assembly, and it's going to be a virtual assembly featuring all the Spanish classrooms. Um, and then on Friday, October 30th, Halloween will not be canceled at All Souls. It is a huge tradition at our school to have a costume parade, and we will be looking to do uh, some sort of drive-through experience for the kids and for our community. Um, even if, in a small chance, you know, we don't know what the future holds. Like I said, it'll be month to month. We don't know if we would be able to come back in November and what that would look like. Um, we will be evaluating that on a month to month basis. But right now we know that our Christmas program will have to be virtual. And so you'll be hearing um, Mr. Eslas give more information about that. And he's already singing Christmas songs. So, um, so if you think you're hearing Christmas in September, you're, you're right. He is anxious to get that started. Um, because that will take a lot of time and energy to put together. So we're excited about that. A few family guild updates. We have a, a theme shirt this year. So they go on sale tomorrow. We'll be sending you an email if you'd like to get um, a t-shirt um, where we are, um, we're grateful to the Strata family for sponsoring these shirts. So all the proceeds will be going to our school um, programming and uh, just kind of going along with our theme, be kind, dream big, stay strong, adventure, wait. So those, they will be, the kids will be allowed to wear those for PE um, and they will be going on sale tomorrow. You'll get an email and we're gonna try an online order form um, and there'll be a pickup at one of our drive-throughs. We also were gifted um, through a grant, um, All Souls masks for all students and staff. So we're very excited, I meant to, um, include a picture, but everyone will be getting an All Souls face mask as well. Those are a gift, like I said, the face masks are gifts um, and the t-shirts will be a fundraiser. And for those of you who are new, um, there's so many opportunities to get involved in our family guild. It's a little different this year, but we still do have active committees. Uh, this year, the room parents committee is gonna be on a pause because we are trying to rethink this committee, rethink this role and especially due to distance learning uh, we figured right now our students um, we're not having events in the same way but if you'd like to assist your students teacher and you have some creative way to be involved please reach out to mr velasquez or directly to your child's teacher um, we are sending out um, in for new students and tk and k um, a directory so that they can form a, a parent directory and so that way anybody can reach out to one another look forward to sending that out to you. Um, the decorating committee, this committee came and, and decorated for our drive-through blessing last week. So they're still uh, finding ways to give to the school. Um, we do have a yearbook committee. Um, and like I said, uh, in the next few weeks, our student clubs will start, our student government, our uh, art club, and we also have a journalism club. So if you are interested in helping um, the very few, we just have a few adults on this committee and we could really use your help. Also, you know, documenting this time. This is a unique time in history. So um, if you can document it at home and send us those pictures or your pictures from the drive through blessing, that would be great. We have a dine out committee. I mean, some places have dine out because you can sit outside, but you can also just take out committee now. Um, for those of you who are new, this is a big tradition at All Souls that once a month, families um, before would gather at a restaurant and the restaurant would give uh, 15 to 20 to 30 percent back to the school. Now um, it will just be a takeout but our first one's going to be Mama's Pizza in South Pass and that's uh, September 23rd. Um, then we're gonna have a Chipotle and so at least you can wave to friends um, as you pass them or wait for the food um, and then we're gonna have Panera um, in November. So stay tuned for those. Just finding different ways to support our local community. So if you are a restaurant owner or you have a family member who is, we'd love to support you and we can, um, can, can maybe schedule something for one of our dine outs, our family dine out. So just please let us know. Uh, gardening is still very active. They've been doing occasional Saturdays if you want to get involved in gardening. Um, and of course we have a STEM parent committee, service learning, 
teacher appreciation, uh, school improvement, golf tournament, still looking to the spring for a golf tournament. Um, so if you would like to get involved, um, and maybe you haven't gotten involved in, in Family Guild in the past, and this is a new time, um, you can ask, tell anybody on the admin team or contact the Family Guild communications chairs um, at family.guild at gmail.com. So if you have ideas, you want a new committee, we are a very democratic group there. Everyone kind of jumps in and gets to be a part of it. Some of you have been asking about service hours. We are waiving our service hour commitment for this year, um, just because this, it's different and limited in the way you can serve. I am so grateful for the many families who are continuing to volunteer. We had an amazing parent who uh, washed and organized all of our uh, lost and found and all of our, um, and organized our uniform exchange. So for those of you who are looking to um, save some money and we have tons of newly cleaned and ready to go organized uh, uniform exchange. So you can exchange one piece of item um, of uniform for another, or they're just $5 for new parents. So, um, so that's just uh, some ways that people have been serving our schools. We have um, serving our school. Like I said, we have our garden committee. We have these, um, our dine out committee has been working. So if you want to help, we welcome it. We also know that you are serving our kids and serving our school every single day <laughs> by supporting their distance learning. You are, have already given your 20 hours in the first two days. So um, we just thank you so much because our success is the success that our parents, um, and I'm sure it's caused a lot of tears and um, trials at times and need you know, lots of patience that has been needed um, so we just really appreciate that. That is your commitment. <laughs> um, we will still have the $150 family fundraising commitment um, because we do want to create a sustainable future for our school. And we will be looking at different ways of how we might go about raising um, that money. And of course, we also are very sensitive to where families are at. So we will look for things that raise money from the community. One other thing, so um, just checking the time. Uh, about a year ago this time, we said we were going to put our new building project on hold. Uh, we were waiting on um, some debate amongst the archdiocese and the powers that be about where the location of this new building might be. Of course, now more than ever, all souls to fit our program and for safety to spread out to have um, up-to-date facilities, we need this new building. And thankfully, uh, a location has been decided on. And not only that, the, um, the, our main donor, our gracious um, donor um, from Shea Family Charities uh, to the tune of $5 million has um, re-engaged the school because during the um, discussion around the location and then with COVID, there was um, obviously, like many things, some hesitation, but they have re-engaged and are moving full speed ahead. So our commitment, and I, again, I will share this later once we get our uh, renderings and our high level budget, which is what we've been waiting for, for the last few years, that is coming. And I, it is moving forward. We are very excited about that. And we'll look, our capital campaign executive committee met last week, um, highly, um, enthusiastic group of people which really shows their faith in our future because it is about faith in our future right now. It might feel hard to get out of the present um, uh, malaise, but if we believe and we commit now and we get that momentum going, we will, we will show our supporters that we do have faith in all souls. Um, and we'll be kicking off that capital campaign at the end of October, early November. Um, and we're going to be looking for 100% participation at any amount. So we understand and we are deeply aware um, as educators of the real, um, the issues of our day and the financial struggles uh, some of our families and community members um, are facing. So we will be um, 
it will be different than perhaps other capital campaigns and since there'll be no minimum donation and that sort of thing. But we will look forward to just getting everyone excited about that uh, commitment to our future at a time um, that's, uh, that's quite difficult. But we'll also see some real momentum, I think, that people will be excited about. So stay tuned for that. This is the placement of the building uh, is here. So um, this is building A and this is building B. Here's our church. So at the last I shared this with the community, the building was over here. And so it's been relocated to this back lot, Acacia, where our modulars currently are. Yes, the modulars will need to be moved. We will keep you up to date on where those will go. Um, but the, the same square footage that was in this original, um, our, the building over here is, has been maintained. Um, and so that's really exciting. It's a two-story building um, and it will have a steam room, a music room, and uh, library space as well as classrooms. So we look forward to sharing more once we have that. And we know the road ahead is, is long. <laughs> um, we don't know how long, but we um, are grateful for everyone being on this journey with us. Um, and we're grateful for the questions. The feedback has, has helped us build this program. We will take your questions. We look forward to a follow-up meeting um, that provides the details of our reopening when that is more imminent. Um, and as well as details about our capital campaign and building when we have uh, what you all have been waiting for, which is uh, the renderings, the, what the building actually looks like, and the detailed plan. So we look forward to sharing that with you. Uh, we have a few moments. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, end with a prayer, and then we'll give a few moments for people to add questions to the chat and um, go from there. So Ms. Vasquez, you could lead us in the prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll take a few minutes to field some more questions. Thank you for joining us tonight. Like we said, we wanted to honor your time. We, the program has concluded. We will. Um, some of the questions about specifics about the capital campaign and the building, we will answer in a later time once we have those, perhaps even with the architect. Um, so thank you again. And if you have, um, good, Dr. Bevo put in the chat, if you have interest in, I believe it's actually, oh, it is familyguild.org. Um, yes, yeah, so go ahead and email the Family Guild directly. If you'd like to join a committee, especially new families, we invite you, it's a great way to meet such incredible people, uh, hardworking and creative. So, um, is there any? If there's any other questions, I see photos for yearbook. You can send those to yearbook yearbook .allsouls at gmail. Um, thank you. And yes, Amazon Smile. Support us at Amazon Smile. All Souls is listed. All Souls Parish School. Please support us there. We are looking at virtual school masses, um, and we are even hoping, um, uh, we're trying to figure out um, when we might do that and how we might live stream. So we might be looking out to some, uh, 
some parents to help us with that. But yes, we are looking at doing some uh, school masses. And the plan, I believe, is to do adopt a family uh, this year, but I need to talk to the service learning committee. Oh, yes, uh, there's a question on First Communion. Is there any range, two, three months? What is likely? Great, so we're looking at October. We are looking to schedule that outside in October. The question has been whether we could do it as one mass. We really didn't want to do it two different masses because it's so nice for all, but because of the 100 person limit and the spacing, um, we have, I believe, 40 students, 42 students. So with parents, it would be more. So I will look for a uh, first parents of students in third grade who are looking for first communion from last year. That is going to be scheduled in October outside at All Souls. Um, but we are looking to see, we were trying to see if we could do one mass, but it looks like we're going to have to do two masses. Um, so we will uh, stay tuned about that, but we do want to have our first communion and we're seeing how we can be creative and do that um, as a lot of other schools have already done. Um, so look forward to that uh, Saturday um, in October. I like somebody's idea about having students wear face max necklaces. I've seen those, that's a great idea, because when they're eating, which would only occur outside and socially distanced, um, that they would need that. Yeah, you can get masks from Dennis Uniform, uh, but also those masks I was talking about will have our plaid and have our logo on it. I'm not sure if they're doing that at Dennis Uniform. A uh, question about music, art, and PE continuing to be online. Um, yes, they will have to be online because uh, in terms to right now, to protecting the teachers from going to class to class, protecting students. So those would continue to be online with the hybrid schedule. Although we would do some class level PE activities um, in, in lieu of a regular recess. School portraits, that, thank you. I'm going to put that down because yes, we have um, been asked if we are, want to um, do those and we need to follow up with the company. So planned, yes, we need to get a date on the calendar because those would likely be by appointment and outside. Somebody asked about All Souls mask. Yes, that is coming and there'll be one for every student and teacher for free. <laughs> so as we get those, we'll let you know. So I see more questions. Let's see. Oh, the All Souls Mask for Parents. Um, yes. So we have ordered just 50. We didn't know how many. Um, those will be for sale, the same ones as the students. Uh, uh, let me see if I can, I will put it in, I do have a picture of it, put it in the, so this is the All Souls mask, <laughs> you can see it right there, and there will be some for sale for parents. And let's see, there's, Yes, the live feed possibility is a great idea for the First Communion. So maybe what we'll do is have a school mass and try out that live feed uh, feature first, and then we'll try it for First Communion. So I think that's, I'm putting that, adding that to my list. I love that idea. Oh, Ms. Vasquez, you're muted. I'm sorry. Would you please hold up the mask again? They would like to see that mask again. And then they're wondering if we could order the masks and other spirit wear online. There it is. It is cute. That's the one, that's the one all students will be receiving and will be on sale for parents. Yes, it'll be online. We are, we are trying out something new. You'll see it with our t-shirt um, sales. That'll go out tomorrow. It'll be all online. If it works and it seems to be helpful, then we'll do all of our spirit wear that way. So. 
Thank you. Um, see some if there's any more questions. We'll have a few more till 710. Oh, so this year's first communion uh, for our current second grade, they will be prepared and will are being prepared through their religion class. We will see what that'll look like in the spring. So our hope is to have this year's second grade class have their first communion in the spring per usual, which is usually a Saturday in May. Our last year's second grade, current third grade, who have prepared and were ready, uh, would have, I talked to Father Patrick, and our idea would be on Friday morning to come and do their first confession. It would be outside, um, you know, we'd space it out, and then they would have their first communion the next day. I see someone's question about the identical mask. Um, it's a good question. We definitely want everyone's name embroidered and we wouldn't require students to wear the same mask to school. They could wear whatever mask they would like and perhaps they would use their All Souls mask when they're outside and in the community to show their school pride. I like the idea of the silk screen with names on them. So we will look into that in terms of uh, how we can have uh, the names. So thank you so much for joining us tonight and um, taking time to uh, connect with us. We had over 125 uh, families join. So again, we thank you and we will be in touch with further updates. Have a great night. I want to make sure we save the chat. Yes, thanks. We'll wait for a few minutes for people as people are logging off if there's any other questions and we will save the chat for future reference. Let's see how we can do that. Okay, I've saved the chat. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you and take care.